In this video, I get brake checked, have a rocket ship engine, and get blocked 1 billion times per session. This day was an absolute chaos, and if you want to see how it ends, keep watching. Hey guys, what's up, Redactions here, and welcome back to this brand new video. And today, we are once again back at Pottendijk Emme for more training for the first round of the Dutch Telecent T4 series. So um, yeah, I felt like last time we really found out some good things about the setup. Now we actually know what to do in terms of setup. We didn't know that last time. We had to find it out on the day itself. Track does appear to be dry, unlike last time, which is uh, better, I think. So um, yeah, let's quit yapping and uh, let's start this day. Well, this thing's all done now. Um, yeah, we're quite early, so we have to wait now for a little bit. The gate there over there is not yet open, so yeah, we can't do anything. So let's take a stroll around the paddock because it is quite packed today. So I hope we finally have some things to compare ourselves to. So yeah, of course, the Dutch uh, T4 series is about to kick off and they also have a club championship for two stroke cards. And you can see behind me that T4 is quite big now. So yeah, it's basically just another testing day for us. Um, yeah, we'll only be the third time out this year, so let's just try to make the best of it. Also, we have a new set of tires for today, which is uh, needed, because uh, I basically only have dead sets plus a few new ones. So yeah, let's go out on new ones. I hope the MXC rims will actually work out this time, because as you remember, last time I just had no grip on the MXCs, I don't know why. But first we'll be starting out exactly like we started out last time. Complete standard setup. But um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Welcome back to an absolutely packed circuit Pottendijk Emme here in the northeast of the Netherlands. We are back once again in my senior Rotax to prepare for the first round of the Dutch Tillotson T4 series. And you might be thinking, Red, why are you driving your Rotax instead of your Tillotson T4? Excellent question with an even better answer. I am racing in both the Dutch T4 series as well as some rounds of the Danish Rotax Max Challenge this year. Because Denmark is far away and I still need to be testing for things for my Rotax, I take my Rotax to the track where the next T4 race will be held. That way I will be testing for both the T4 series and Danish RMC at the same time. Also because the Rotax is much faster and thus more physically demanding, this is a great way to prepare my body for racing in T4. Don't worry though because next week I will actually be testing my T4 card so that we can finally see how our pace is in T4. I hope it's good. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and focus on this day. Unlike last week when we started out on a wet track and overcast skies, this time we had a dry track and some nice sunlight, but don't let that deceive you. It was only 4 degrees Celsius and even though we had these beautiful new gloves, my hands were absolutely freezing. So when I pulled into the pits to check my tire pressures, I went back to the van to get some surgical gloves. I put them on under my regular gloves and then went back out on track. It might sound ridiculous, but trust me, they are great at keeping your hands nice and hot. Speaking of nice and hot, this t-shirt by Nauden Detailing surely will make you, yes, even you, look nice and hot. They have just launched their new collection of car guide t-shirts that will certainly make you stand out amongst your pals. Personally, I chose this white GT3 RS version because it looks super clean and because RS stands for really sexy. Because Nauden Detailing is sponsoring this video, they have given you guys a special discount code. If you use the code RED5, you will get a 5% discount on your t-shirt. They ship worldwide, so no matter where you are, you can get one for yourself. Check the description for the link and more info. But, where were we? You might have already noticed that it is extremely busy on track and that there is a lot of slower cards. This is because the NXT GP, aka the organizers for the Dutch T4 series, also had a coaching day, in which they provide on-track coaching at a fair price. I like what they are doing to keep karting accessible for new people by providing services like this. But that means that they were also on track for people who didn't need the coaching. And let's just say that I got a little bit close for comfort with one of the coaches. A little while later I came in again because the tire pressures went up due to the temperature. The sun was heating up the tires and the track a lot, which basically made the data we collected on tire pressures last week useless. 
This just further proves my point that every day is different in karting. And even though the tire pressures were good now, due to the copious amounts of traffic I was still unable to set a good lap time. So I just decided that enough was enough and I came into the pits. Alright, not gonna lie, that didn't go too shabby actually. Yeah, only about two tenths of our best time from last time we were here, which is three weeks ago now. So yeah, the track is definitely better than it was last time. Uh, definitely has a big part to do with the fact that the sun's starting to shine now. Uh, I feel like this track gets a lot better when it's warm. And last week was just cold and a little bit wet and a little bit slippery and stuff. By the way, just look at how busy it is. There's so many people driving. Really, it does me good to see that there is a little bit more life at this place again. If you haven't seen last week's video, I kind of explained uh, in there that this track is slowly dying off, which is a big shame. And whilst we're here, we also get the chance to... Uh, Kind of have a look at our competition for the uh, Dutch T4 series because today there's actually quite a few Fels guys driving here so we can kind of uh, have a look at how good they are doing and uh, how much I have to worry and this is one of the best spectating spots out of any track here in the Netherlands you can basically see the entire track just from here look at that and if we look a little bit closer over there we can see my cars and my girlfriend wow so we're only driving in groups from about 12 o'clock, so it will be uh, fucking busy basically every session up until 12 o'clock. So I'm going to do one more uh, before 12 o'clock and after that uh, we'll have a little bit more track time for ourselves. So let's get the bastard ready again and then we can go out on track. Did you miss the visor cam? Well, the Cambox V4 Pro is back after having a dead battery and it being replaced by Cambox in France. The camera gives a really good impression of what a driver actually sees when they're out on track because it is mounted inside the helmet. After the battery was replaced the camera was reset to factory settings however and that also meant it was set to 30 fps so my sincere apologies for that. Also the bumps on the track are a lot more visible on this camera due to its lack of proper stabilization. Just take a look at this. Bumps are one of the main reasons this track is physically demanding. Cards don't have suspension so the energy of going over every little bump is transferred directly to your body and your body will constantly adjust to these bumps without you thinking about it. This costs both energy and concentration, especially in corners. The worst offenders on this track are definitely turns 4 to 7. Speaking of bumps however, this is why you should never get out of the way for faster drivers. The guy ahead of us here is a T4 Junior. They only have a third of my power and tires that have a lot less grip. So it's no surprise that I catch up to him in no time. But when I then got close, this happened. I'm not really sure what happened, but I think he tried to get out of the way by staying on the left hand side and braking. I wanted to set up a switchback move so I went to the outside too and boom, incident happens. So whenever you notice a faster driving behind you, the best thing to do is to basically do nothing. You should know he's there, stick to your own line and the faster driver will pass you the first opportunity he gets. It is the responsibility of the faster driver to make the overtake. The crash knocked my bumper out of position so I had to come back into the pit lane to put it back in the correct position. Once we were back out, I found this pre-Evo Rotax Max Senior. Now if you guys didn't know, the Evo upgrade is something that came along in 2015. This basically redesigned some major components of the Rotax engine. And as you can see, the older models are still around, so let's have a look at how it compares to a new one. I ended up in a drag race with it and you can actually see it holds its own against our very decent 2024 engine. I definitely did not expect it to be so close. Then, one session later, it was time to test some exhausts again. So far we had been running the best one I had, which is a crusty beat up exhaust from 2015. It is quite good, but I also had a brand new exhaust from K-Racing to test. If you really want to know the difference between two parts, you should change them within the same session. So first we do a few laps with the old exhaust, come into the pits, swap the exhaust and then go back out again. One thing I immediately noticed was the fact that this exhaust was a lot quieter than the other one. You can actually hear it very well on the camera. In terms of performance though, it was pretty good. Apparently the 2024 pipes are constructed slightly differently, although I couldn't really find any proof of that. 
It was definitely quick though and I would say that a 2024 pipe is really competitive. We had some more small battles with the other senior Rotex drivers which made me quite hungry so let's have some lunch now. Alright guys, we just had some very delicious food. Anyways, now it's time to get serious because we're going to do a run on new tires for the first time in uh, about half a year, I think. And yeah, let's see if we can push uh, further down into the 40s because uh, we did a set of 40.8 last time around and uh, actually I was pleasantly surprised about the new exhaust. But yeah, the new 2024 exhausts are definitely okay. It was yeah about as fast as my good exhaust. But yeah, definitely go get yourself a 2024 exhaust. You can get them at K Racing, by the way. And yeah, going to put on new tires now and uh, let's see how it goes after this. When you want to get off the darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view Go feathers and see this too When you want to get off the darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down After running on old tires for almost half a year, it was finally time to go out on a new set. However, new tires on a busy day like this is more of a curse than a blessing. You see, these Mojo D5 tires that I use only have a very small window in which they give their optimal grip. And that is lap 1, 2 and 3. After this, it is not unusual to see them drop off by 2, 3 or even 4 tenths. That is why it is super important to set your good lap time in those specific laps. I noticed a big open space after this train here. So I used this as a small window to set my lap time in. It was of no use however, because I caught back up to the slower cards in only half a lap. The second lap of the run however was free of traffic. Let's ride on board with that hot lap. Then, sector 1 of the third lap was looking good, another 2 tenth improvement. This meant we would be able to set a lap time in the low 40s, which I would have been very happy with. But unfortunately, we got held up once again. This basically meant that the session was over for me, as at this point the tires had already experienced their optimal grip. Shit. Alright, so, we did the run on new tires, but unfortunately it was just yeah, too busy out there. Um, yeah, I was on my way to improve by another 3 tenths, but then uh, I encountered some slow traffic. And yeah, when there are so many slower cars out on track, it's uh, yeah, really hard to plan uh, your track position. It's basically impossible. Also, uh, yeah, now we tried the MXC wheels because it's a lot more sunny than last time. Um, I'm not convinced that they're better though. We're going to do one more stint and then uh, we'll know for sure. So yeah, rolling we did a 40.7, but theoretical we could do a 40.5. Well guys, time to go back out. Unfortunately, I have some issues with the battery of both the GoPro and the cam box, so no on board. But uh, I do have a different surprise for you. session without the camera, you didn't miss anything, super busy, couldn't set a lap time, nice. One thing that did happen though is that my uh, brake disc moved, uh, it's now all the way to the right and uh, yeah, that uh, meant that I had no straight line speed because my brake was rubbing against the pad. So yeah, the day is actually almost over already, I uh, have one more session after this. I'm going to try a new carburetor because uh, I actually have a 2022 model uh, which I still have to try so I'm going to do that now. And also uh, I want to give the, uh, the other torsion bar another try because I feel like it might actually be quicker now. So yeah, let's do some work. Be alright as long as you tell me that we ain't running out of time Thinking about all the things we did tonight Boom, ready. 
Well, this is a brand new 2022 carburetor. The previous one we ran was a 15 one, which uh, are, yeah, basically, people say that those are the best, but let's see how this one goes. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Um, let's go out on track for the last time today. And before you know it, the day is nearing its end already. Unfortunately, the helmet cam had battery issues and it only recorded a few minutes. So let's just enjoy the highlights of those five minutes. Unfortunately, the cam box ran out of battery um, pretty much instantly when we went out on track, so I don't think I have any onboard to show you. What I can show you, however, is that we improved. We now did a uh, 40.5, which is uh, basically the same as the theoretical that we had on new tires. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty decent day at the office, and um, I am uh, ready for next week when we are going to test the uh, Tillotson here. And uh, after that, of course, it's uh, race week once again. Anyways, guys, I'm going to clean up now. Definitely check out last week's video, which is on screen here. This video, however, is done. Bye-bye.